Hello and welcome to Chapter 7. This is the chapter where it all really starts to pay off. We have been learning bits and pieces and doing little two lines, three lines, four lines of code to learn the basic building blocks of Python and learn some of the syntax and find lots of terms. But now we're actually going to start doing something. So if you look at what we've been doing so far, you know, we have been we're inside this little computer and you type up, you, you know, the Python says what next and you give it its command and it does something and you do something else and does something and you do this three or four times unless you write a loop and then it goes like, you know, 10, 20 times and that's it. And then maybe we write a thing that reads something from our keyboard, gives us something back and then we write something that prints something out, print a few things out. And so we've been pretty much using the keyboard, the screen, the CPU and the memory. That's kind of where we've been living. And while it's important to talk to the keyboard and the screen, the, the real world is things like databases that live out here, uh, files that live on our systems and, you know, connecting to the network and reading, reading data from the network. And so that's what we're starting to do right now is we're starting to be able to work outside kind of our code and create things that are permanent. Um, and so we're going to be talking, initially we're going to work on files. We'll later talk to databases and the network and other stuff. But for now, we are talking about files. And so really kind of, we're stepping out a little bit and creating, reading things that are permanent and creating things that are permanent. The kinds of files that we're going to talk about mostly are text files. And you can think of these as a sequence of lines in a file that are easily read by Python. Um, you, you've been making text files all along. Your, you know, hello.py, that file's a text file too. You're using a text editor to create that file. You put your Python commands in a file, you run those files, and that's what it is. And so a file can be thought of as a bunch of lines, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a blank line here. That's possible. And um, but the but the reality is is that these are actually just lines, and we have a special character called the new line that we'll talk about in a second. So to read a file, uh, you have to call the open function. And open returns what we call a file handle. Open doesn't actually read the file. Open makes it possible so that you can read the file. So the, the parameters to open are, it takes uh, one parameter that's required, which is the name of the file. Another parameter that's optional, whether or not to read it or write it. If we're reading the file, it doesn't harm it. it you can read it over and over. If you write it, it actually, if there's already data in that file, it truncates it and writes something. And we're not going to really write files, we're mostly going to read them. And so open sort of, you pass it in a file, it gives you back this file handle, and then you have a variable in which you store it. I often call it f hand uh, to be mnemonic. Uh, just, you'll see my code, I use f hand all the time to indicate that that is a file handle. And so if we were to run this in, uh, in interactive mode, we'll open mbox.txt, and that is a function built into Python and then it gives us back a handle. It does not give the data. And you can kind of see this when we print out the file handle using the print statement. It doesn't print the lines that are in the file. The lines that are in the file are sort of out there. There could be like, you know, 10 million lines for all we know, lines in the file. The handle is like a little opening outside of your program and you can talk to the file by opening it, then you can read stuff, you could, if you're writing the file, you can write stuff, and then you close the file to shut the handle down. But handle is a thing that allows you to get to the file. It is not the file itself, and it's not the data in the file. It's just a, a wrapper that kind of allows you. So this, if you print it out, it's like, that's the file we opened, we're reading it, and encoding has to do with the different kinds of character sets, which we talked about at the end of the last lecture, that Unicode character set, etc. UTF-8 is a, a, a great character set. It's, it's, it's probably the most typical character set that you will run into, although you can have uh, different character sets of files, but most of them are UTF-8. So, of course, this is Python. If you make a mistake and there's a file that doesn't exist, we get a traceback, and it blows up. Um, <clears throat> We'll show you how in a second how to deal with that. Now, the new line character is an important part of file reading. And in files, in strings, we can put the new line character in by this backslash n character. And the backslash n is the character that indicates that we're supposed to go to another line. Go to a new line. Go to a new line. And so we have, what is this? Well, that's a backslash n. That's a backslash n. 
And so if we print it out, we print it this way, we see that the backslash n is in there. This is how we type it. We actually type backslash n to Python to indicate that we're supposed to put that there. Um, but if we do a print statement, it actually interprets the backslash n. And so the backslash n causes kind of this movement to the beginning. Now the print actually at the end of this adds another backslash n. So, so the backslash n that we put in by putting it into the string is that one. And then print always puts a backslash n at the end. There's actually a way to override that backslash n behavior by putting something on the print statement, which we'll talk about later. Now, it's important to note that the backslash n is one character, right? And so even though this x backslash n y prints this, and then print adds another new line to go down to here, if you ask how many characters, the, what is the length of this? Well, it's only three. That's because that's a character, the backslash n is a character, and the y is a character. So it's a three character string. So the backslash n is a character like all the rest of the characters, but it's only, um, we, we encode it by typing backslash n. It's called an escape, where the backslash is the escape, backslash n is a way to say new line, because we can't see it. It's a way for us to encode in a string this non-printable character, this invisible character. The white space, it's part of white space. So as we're reading through the file, we can think of it as a sequence of lines, and we can read these a line at a time. We can also read them a character at a time if we want. And so, but it's more common to say, read this line, read the next line, read the line after that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the way to best think about this, it, it, it doesn't really matter. You can think about it as lines, and we will in most of the programs that we write. But realize that the way when we see this, um, when we see it like this, it comes back to the beginning, it comes back to the beginning. There's a character in the file at each of these points to say, go back to the beginning. It's like hitting the enter key on your computer. And that is a new line. So you have to think that in the file, in order for your text editor and Python and everybody to know where the lines end, you put new lines in the file. And that's another character. So, you know, this looks like an empty line. This line here looks like an empty line, but really it has a single character and the character is a new line. And it turns out that in a bit, we're gonna to need to keep track of the fact that every line is ended by a new line. So up next, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to read files in Python.